Sometimes I get on here and I tell y'all stories about the things that is going on in my life. And I tell y'all all the time that I'm going to use y'all as my therapy. Well, this is a part of my therapy. This is a part of my therapy because earlier today I uploaded a vlog and I uploaded a vlog and it was telling about how me and my mom got into it. But this is nothing like this. I was I was cleaning out my drawer and I found a picture, a picture of my son and my niece and my nephew, a picture that my cousin Dewana had took two days before they found her body in her car, November the 27th, 1997. Now, keep in mind, my cousin never had any kids. My cousin always, always, always wanted kids, but she never had any. So maybe three days before Thanksgiving, my cousin had came over on that Monday and she had asked me, Monique and Margaret, could she come and get the kids? Now, I told y'all in the story before that me, Monique and Margaret was pregnant the same year, three months apart. So this made our kids four. Well, three and a half, four when this, this happened. Dewana came back. She got all three of the kids and she kept them. And when I say she kept them, she kept them. But see, Dewana lived the kind of life that Dewana wanted to live. So we trusted her. This is my cousin. So, yeah, you can come and get the kids. So, Monique had called her later on that night, and she had thought, like, okay, well, my grandma was out of town, and she was coming back for Thanksgiving. And so, because we all was grown, we all was going to fix Thanksgiving dinner for our mother and my grandma, for our mothers and my grandma. So, Monique had, so Monique had an idea that we was all going to cook. Each one of us had a side dish that we was going to cook. My mother was going to cook the main meal. But we was going to fix like little side dishes and this and that. We was going to make it like a family affair or whatever. Dewana wanted to cook. Now, we knew that Dewana could cook, but we still. That's my cousin. She wanted to cook for her mother. Fine. Her mother is Wheelchair Willie. Now, keep in mind, this was on that Monday. All week, we was all excited, calling each other and this and that and the third, trying to make sure that our part of the meal was done. Now, on the 24th is when this started. On the 24th, Dewana had called Monique that morning and she told Monique, she said, Monique, she said, I am tired. She said, I'm tired and I'm pregnant. And when Monique said, Monique was like, what? She was like, I'm pregnant. She said, I'm pregnant and I done moved out. See, okay, I got to go back. Let me go back to Dewana was with another female. Dewana was with another female when she was in jail. Dewana but didn't when like she was with this female, she didn't want to be with her no more. And we, we kind of liked the girl, whatever the case may be, because Dewana liked her. But Dewana had met a man. And she had fell in love with this guy. And she fell in love with him to the point he had got her an apartment, got her a little blue car, a little blue small station wagon. And they was doing just fine. Dewana had found out she was pregnant. Dewana was so happy. She had called Monique the prior the day before. She had told Monique, like, look, I am pregnant. I am. I cannot wait to tell everybody at Thanksgiving dinner that I'm having a baby. And so we was all excited for her. That that was the day before Thanksgiving. Monique, Thanksgiving Day started calling everybody to make sure everybody was on point as far as making their little meals and stuff. The side dishes for Thanksgiving. Now, keep in mind, my mom, her mom, and two of my aunts had went to the airport to pick my mom up. Now, all through this, I started calling. They was going to the airport to pick my grandma up. Now, keep in mind, that made it Thanksgiving Day. Everybody had turned in their... Side dishes and stuff, we have been calling Dewana for two days. No answer. When I say calling Dewana for two days, the guy had even came by our house, asked us, had we seen Dewana? We was all looking for Dewana. Nobody knew where she was. Nobody. When I tell you we looked and looked and looked and looked for Dewana, I could not, we could not find my cousin. Thanksgiving had passed. It was the 26th. The guy that she was living with came by the house. He was talking to my mom. He was like, something is wrong. Dewana would have either answered one of her pagers or she would have came by the house. He was like, the last time we seen Dewana, the last time I seen her, she had on her black coat, some black boots, some black jeans, and a shirt. And she had both of her pagers was on, he said, because he had just paid the bill. So when this guy had talked to my mom, instantly my mom called Dame Police. When she called Dame Police, she filled out a missing persons report for Dewana. And her car. So the last time somebody had actually seen Dewana was the day before Thanksgiving at the corner store on Cornell and on Cornell, the Cornell, yeah, 
corner store. And at that time, in 1997, that, that corner store, that store there was jumping. When I say jumping, it had everybody was in the parking lot, everybody was doing whatever. Dewana made some of her transactions there at that at that corner store. But Dewana also, she was very aware of her surroundings. She would not. If she didn't know you, she wasn't fucking with you. So by her being up there, people had knew she was up there. And people had said that they had saw her there the day before Thanksgiving. That was the last time. Now, because they... Dewana had been arrested before, the Dayton police had already knew who she was. Hold on, let me switch this. Because I want y'all to be able to hear me. The Dayton police had knew who Dewana was. So when they knew by her, them knowing who she was, that we was all looking around, was looking for her car, we was going past her apartment. We had started harassing the guy that she was dating because we thought he knew something that we didn't know. So this made it the 26th. Now, keep in mind, we had been past that store looking for Dewana. We had been to the Cornell Apartments looking for Dewana. Nobody has saw my cousin. So instantly, her mother started panicking. My mother started panicking. Everybody started panicking. We looking for Dewana. Now we know something is going on because she ain't called nobody. She ain't been to my mom's house. And my mom's house was the safe haven. Dewana was not there. Dewana had not checked in. So instantly, instantly we knew something was wrong. Instantly, we knew that something was wrong with my cousin because she hadn't checked in at all. Not with her mother, not with my mother, not with my grandma, not with her sisters. Dewana had two sisters and she hadn't checked in with them. So we had checked in with them and we still had no sign of Dewana. Maybe I'm going to say about 6, 630. My mom gets a phone call. It's dating police. Because the last address Dewana had given to the police was my mom's. The Dayton police had called my mom and asked, could they come by her house? Instantly, everybody went to my mom's house because we knew something was wrong. So when Dayton police got there, we was all standing there and he was like, we need somebody. We think we found her. There was a car parked on Gilsey and, um, on Gilsey and Nancy. And they needed somebody to go down to the coroner's office to identify the body. Now, keep in mind, before I go any further, I have to tell y'all this part. My cousin on each finger had rings. She had rings on each finger doubled. Her ears was pierced from the top all the way down. And she always, always, always had on a triple fat goose. And she had on two or more pagers. Always kept a knot of money on her. Always, always, always. Keep in mind, please remember this part of the story. My mom and her mom gets downtown. When they get downtown, um, okay. When they get downtown, instantly my mom starts screaming. When my mom starts screaming, she calls my sister, which we all was over to my mom. My mom tries to stay calm. Because she know we get ready to lose our shit. She tells us it's her. When the police asked my mom could they come by the next day to talk to everybody. They said when they sat down in my mom's dining room at her table. And they was telling us how they found my cousin. Now listen. Normally when people are murdered. They are senseless. I don't know if they, they be brutal. You think brutal. Whoever done this to my cousin, not only did she still have on all of her jewelry, not only did she have on all her necklaces, all her rings, all her earrings, all the money in her pocket, both pagers, and the keys to the car was on her as she was wrapped up in a sheet perfectly. She was, she was placed neatly in the back seat of her station wagon. Her car was driven to the spot where they found it. And they didn't put it in the woods or anything. They parked it on the street in front of somebody's house. So they knew that somebody was eventually going to find her. And when they found her, she had been dead since Thanksgiving Day. She died on Thanksgiving. And whoever did this to her 
had to have loved her, had to have thought like they didn't want to just throw her somewhere in the trash or something. They put her in her car, locked the car doors from the inside and left my cousin in her car. Now, of course, because of the lifestyle that Dewana lived, everybody was devastated. Uh, street pharmacists, everybody was devastated. We could not believe this. My cousin, the detectives called it a crime of passion because they found a cable cord around her neck where she had been strangled. And she had been strangled. She, by her being so light, you can see the mark still on her neck at the funeral. But my aunt had took a scarf and tied it around her neck. Now, keep in mind, because of the way that Dewana had died and the way the lifestyle that she had lived, my aunt, and this is the, oh, I could give my aunt in the wheelchair credit for this. She had her hairdresser, Dewana's hairdresser. She paid her extra to go to the funeral home and to do her hair the way she liked it. And she liked it with the small curls and stacked really high and it was molded really good and it was it was tapered on the sides she had on her jeans her triple fat goose and all her jewelry was on her they buried her with her pager they buried her with her pagers her boots and everything to this day all i can remember was was when we walked in her boyfriend was in the front row with my aunt, and he was devastated. The girl that had been dating my cousin was standing up at the casket, and she was telling people to move. I remember Monique walking up to her and telling her, you need to leave. Now, they never found out who or what did this or why it was done, but this is an unsolved murder case here in Dayton, Ohio, and they still have not... They don't have any witnesses. They don't have any fingerprints. They don't have anything. Now, people have made their assumptions on who did it and why. At this point, it's been since 1997. My cousin's soul has rested all this time. And I think I wanted to tell y'all the reason why I chose to tell y'all this story is because earlier I did a vlog. And I was in Walmart when I seen the girl that was dating my cousin and she recognized me when I came to go to the checkout aisle. When I went to the checkout aisle, she was like, you don't remember me? And I looked at her and I told her, yeah, I remember you. And she was like, I just hate that you just looked at me like that. And I told her, I said, listen, I hold no grudge about anything. I said, my cousin is good. And she was like, I was gonna ask y'all, had y'all heard anything? And I told her, I said, no, we haven't. And I kind of walked off. And then in the back of my mind, I kept thinking like, my cousin is good. My cousin got away. My cousin was the one that got away. And so even though she's not here and this is how she passed, every year they have, downtown. every December, downtown Dayton police puts up a tree of the unsolved murders here in Dayton, Ohio. And we go down there for her. And we make sure to put an angel on the tree for my cousin. See, because my cousin, you know, regardless of how she lived her life, she lived her life. And I was glad that somebody loved her enough that they didn't just throw her off in the woods or in a trash can or something. They wrapped her up neatly, positioned her in the back of her car, locked the car doors. And made an anonymous phone call to Dayton police. That's how they found her. Somebody called and said it was a body in the backseat of a car. And the police even said whoever did that was the one that made the phone call. So at the end of the day, my cousin got away, like I said. My cousin got away. And even though she didn't live her life the way everybody wanted As you to can see, this still bothers me. And I think that... When I seen that person, she knew it bothered me. That's the reason why she said I looked at her funny. But I can't accuse anybody of anything, and I don't want to. All I know is that they found her, and she is okay. She's okay now because she's with Monique, and they're back together. So I think I'm going to end this story here. 
So I just thought I should tell y'all that part. I still got stories about Duana and stuff, but I would rather y'all know exactly what went on with my cousin at the end of her life before I tell y'all the exciting parts of her life. Because my cousin was the shit. And she still is. So like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next story. Bye.